So hello guys and welcome to another video. My name is Mark Parham. I am an entrepreneur and property investor. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about why I'm not personally going to be investing in London anytime soon. And I'm going to go through quite a few details about why that is and how the different policy changes in London are really affecting my decision when it comes to where I'm going to be investing. And it really all does stem from legislation and controls. So before we get into this video, if you could possibly give it a big like, massively help me out with the algorithm. And if you haven't already subscribed, why not consider subscribing? When we get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away a property on this channel. So there's no reason not to subscribe. But let's get into the video. I'm going to split it between me and my computer screen. In fact, I'm going to get Nick to just put me somewhere on my computer screen right now, and then <laughs> you'll be able to see that at all times. So this is why I'm not going to be investing in London. Now, the very first reason is it's very hard to find good return on investment deals. So if I go to my computer right now and have a quick look, uh, I was just having a look in areas that I know quite well. So the first one that came to mind was Surrey Keys. I lived there for three years. Um, it's quite central. It's just south of the river near Canary Wharf. So Zone two, I think it is, and I lived there for about three or four years, so I know the area very, very well. And as you know, I like to invest in about three bedroom properties. So I found the cheapest sort of three bedroom property I could. Well, to be fair, there was one slightly cheaper here, as you can see on the screen, um, but this one, you know, much more space for 25 grand more. In terms of value for money, it seemed like a better buy. And I could also find a very comparable rental property. So this was 725,000. The comparable rental property, as you can see, it's same three stories, just round the corner. It's got the same sort of decor, you know, not ultra modern, not ultra high fit, but at the same time, reasonable, ready to rent. And that's £2,000 a month for a £725,000 property. That's so cheap. <laughs> Anybody who thinks renting in London is expensive compared to buying, that's cheap. So if we put that through a deal template, we can see straight away, if you look at the screen, that we've got a purchase price of 725,000. We're saying that the mortgage rate's gonna be 3%. You're gonna need 215,000 pounds to do the deal. So that's 181,000 of deposit, 33,000 of stamp duty, legals, convincing, all that sort of stuff. And then your mortgage interest alone is going to be £1,359 a month. So that gives you a return on investment of 1.83%. Now, I can't get excited about 1.83%. I'm sure you can't either. So I thought, well, maybe you could turn it into a mini HMO, right? Maybe you could do could rent out the rooms on an individual basis. I quickly checked in Surrey Keys. Actually, the area that this is in is not in Article 4 at the moment. And we'll come on to Article 4 in London very shortly. But it's not, so we could do that. The average room rents, as you can see, quite expensive. 745, 825, 850 for, with couples. 875, 800 with an ensuite. So anywhere from 750 to 850 seems to be the price. So I think we could comfortably put it into the HMO with 800 as an average room rental, four rooms, 725 purchase. We've got a return on investment of 3%. So my very first reason that I can't invest in London, and you can do this anywhere in London, is that return on investment is so poor. I can't justify it. So that is my number one reason why I personally won't be investing in London. And I believe investing in London right now completely sucks. So number two, Article 4 is everywhere. Now, I've only done a very small amount of research into this because London's a vast place. It would take me a long time to go to every individual council and have a look at their Article 4 areas. But I thought I'd quickly look at Southwark and I'd quickly look at the one above, which is Tower Hamlets, that's Canary Wharf, and just get a good feel for how much Article 4 is taking up of London. And I've heard from a lot of investors, a lot of London is now Article 4. So I went on the Tower Hamlets website, as you can see here, and we can have a look to see, yep, small houses into multiple dwellings. And we can download a map, which I'll do now. And there it is. As you can see, just a small amount of Tower Hamlets is affected, all of it. So, <laughs> so what I'm hearing from investors regarding Article 4 and a lot of London being taken up by Article 4 straight away seems to ring true. And that is a strong reason for me to not want to invest in London. It reduces my exit strategies. It reduces my options on a property. I'm not going to legally be allowed to just make the decision that actually this works more as a mini HMO. This works more as a single let. I'm not going to be allowed that. I'm not going to be allowed to make those decisions. So for me, that's another red flag and another reason I personally wouldn't be investing in London. 
My number three reason is again down to legislation. And this is the limit on Airbnb and short-term rentals to 90 days a year. So in 2015, Sadiq Khan changed the law to limit the amount of time that you could rent out a property on a short-term basis to 90 days a year. Now, a lot of the councils are finding that very hard to enforce, but Airbnb have an automatic 90-day rule, and a lot of the other booking platforms are currently in conversation to try and make sure that that law is more enforceable. But this is law, so we should consider this fact. The fact that we have an article here talking about how they're struggling to enforce it is irrelevant. We're not trying to circumvent law. We're following the letter of the law when we're investing, or when I'm investing, I certainly am. So for me, to be limited on my Airbnb exposure or my ability to be able to do it as a short-term let to only 90 days makes that strategy completely irrelevant. I can't use it. I'm going to have at least 75% voids, and I know that the strategy is not going to work in that instance. So another reason why London, for me, again, is completely out of the question to invest in. And number four, the risk of rent controls. Sadiq Khan has, again, and you might start to think that I've got a problem with Sadiq Khan. I actually don't. I don't have a problem with anyone as an individual. But I do have a problem with absolutely terrible policies that impact on the ability to be able to trade in a free market. And for me, rent controls embody that sort of issue. At the moment, we already have rent controls. We have rent controls by market. At the moment, if I put one of my properties up that's currently rented out for £1,000 a month, and I put it up for, I don't know, £2,000 a month, guess what? That's going to make me a greedy landlord? No. It'll make me a broke landlord. Nobody will rent it. <laughs> There's a massive shortage of property in London as well. And it, to encourage development, you don't control the rents. There's a million reasons, and I'm not doing this video to just talk about rent controls and why they're bad, but trust me, in every instance, it's going to reduce the number of people who are gonna to wanna to invest in the area, myself included. It's going to reduce the quality of the housing stock because why spend money improving the property if you're not allowed to increase the rent in line with the value that you've created? The supply of properties, because less landlords are going to want to rent them out. It's just a lose, lose, lose scenario. And I understand it comes from the right place of wanting to make sure that everybody has affordable housing. But the way to control that is to increase the supply. That's to incentivize people to invest in an area, to develop in an area, to build in an area, not to reduce the incentive. We live in a capitalist country. And for me, the only way that you're going to create Affordable housing is to increase supply. So for me, again, I can't invest in a city where rent controls are even being discussed because ultimately, if rent controls came in, my properties could plummet in value, the amount of rent that I'll be able to receive could be minimized, and it could end up looking like an absolutely terrible investment. So again, rent controls completely mean London is out of the question for me. Number five on my list is there's just so many other areas, okay? Like, as, they, as you know, I invest in Oxfordshire, I invest in Northamptonshire, I invest in Sheffield, in Nottinghamshire, in Derbyshire we're looking at at the moment. There are so many areas in the UK where as a single let, I can get 12, 13, 14%. As a HMO, mini HMO, 15 to 25% quite comfortably. I just don't have to look at London and reduce those return on investments to as little as one or 2%. There are so many other great areas of the UK to invest in. And honestly, some I've, I've got a property in London and it is my worst return on investment on a cash on cash basis. So for me, London is just completely out of the question because of these four main points and fifth one that just summarizes it all. But there are so many better options out there for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments what your opinion of London is, and I will see you again on the next video.